today I'm looking at um, Koheles, uh, which is a book that we read on uh, Shabbos of Sukkot, which is coming up pretty soon. And um, I'm looking at the translation, uh, actually the uh, commentary of Harav Adin Steinsaltz itself. So I'm going to read it and um, please join me in listening. First, I'm going to look at the parak, uh, the chapter in Hebrew, and then I'm going to go through the English of Rav Steinsaltz. This is just um, the first chapter, Perak Aleph, Sefer Kohelis. Divri Kohelis ben David Melech Birushalayim. Havel Havalim Amar Kohelis, Havel Havalim Hakol Havel. Mahisrom la Adam Bachol Amalo Shayamol Tachas Hashamesh. Dor Holech Vidorba, Baha Aretz Lo Lama Mades. Vizarach Hashemesh Uva Hashamesh. Vel Makamo Shoef Zarea Husham. Holech El Darom Visovev El Safon. Sovev. Sovev holech haruach, ve'al sovev osav shav haruach. Kol ha'nechalim holchim el hayam, ve'hayam enenu malei. El mekom sh'anechalim holchim, sham hem shavim lalaches. Kol devarim igeim, lo yuchal ish ledaber, lo sishpa ayin liros, lo samalei ozen mishmoa. Ma sh'haya hu sh'yeye, uma sh'na'asa hu sh'yeyeaseh. Ve'en kol chadash tachas ha'shamash. יש דבר שיאמר איזה חדש, הוא כבר היה לעולמים אשר היה מלפנינו. אין זיכרון לראשונים וגם לאחרונים שיהיו, לא יהיה להם זיכרון, אם שיהיו לאחרונה. אוקיי, okay, I'm making the text bigger, so I can look at Rav Steinzel's explanation. Basically, Kohelis is about that all things of this world, all the things we pursue and we run after and, and, um, and interest us and excite us are really um, basically uh, unimportant in and of themselves. Uh, we spend so much of our time, so many hours and days and weeks and when it adds up years and years of our lives, pursuing things that are fun and exciting and um, f to fulfill ourselves, to um, fill up our, our time. And all of this is not the purpose of our lives, not the point and the meaning of the world and um, our life. And, and we uh, all do this. And um, Shabbos of Sukkot, when we read Kohelis, is a time to take stock uh, to remind ourselves of the real focus of our lives and that what we spend so much of our limited time on is uh, not anything really, um, is not really real, is, is not, um, I, don't, I don't even have words. I mean, we just, we, we fill up our lives so much with things that actually don't don't fill it up. And here, um, Rav Steinzel says, okay, Pasuk uh, Aleph, verse 1, the words of Kohelis, another name for Solomon, for King Shlomo, whose words of wisdom many people, many people gather to hear, son of David, who was king in Jerusalem. Futility of futilities. The world is absolute futility, says Kohelis. Futility of futilities... All is futility, okay? He can't be more strong and clear. Kohelis characterizes all reality as lacking substance and significance. Pasagimel, uh, verse 3, What advantage is there for man in all his toil as he toils under the sun in this world? Rav Steinsaltz says, Many events transpire here, but none of them is significant. Moreover, even when a matter of significance transpires, or a valuable item is discovered, a valuable thought, a valuable idea or cause, it soon vanishes without a trace. At times, the one responsible for the event or the discovery ultimately realizes its futility himself, while at other times, only future generations will arrive at that realization. You know, time goes on, uh, causes change, 
our understanding of, of, of science changes, our values change, when it's not authentic Torah, it's futile. <laughs> It's, it's, this is these are stark um, ideas, but I but um, we learn that they're ideas that we need to uh, realize and actualize, and this is the time of year that we do. Verse four, pasuk Dalit, A generation goes and a generation comes, and the earth stands forever. Despite all the activity and the many apparent changes, the earth remains in place. The entire world is bound to a cyclicality that does not lead to any change. Basically, the way people are now is the way humans always were. We're not different and special. We're people. We're subject to the same um, human frailties uh, as we always were. We see this uh, in the in the time that we're in of, of the pandemic, of COVID-19, how we're just as vulnerable and just as dependent on the creator as we humans have been for generations, for millennia. The sun rises and the sun sets and seeks to continue uninterrupted to its place. It rises there where it rose the previous day. Faced with this fixed circular mechanism, one comes to question how one day differs from another. How can we put meaning into our days? The sun rises, the sun sets. It seems to be just on, on repeat. <laughs> um, a groundhog day type of existence. And um, when, we're, when we go through times of quarantine, we can feel this maybe even more. It feels like that. What's the point? We just repeat and repeat and repeat our days. But the movements of the sun change slightly with the seasons. It goes to the south of the sky during winter and turns more to the north in summer. It turns and turns, goes, goes in a different direction, Ruach. And in its circuit, it returns to its original direction. Some commentaries hold that this verse refers not to the movements of the sun, but to those of the wind. The wind was one of the four basic elements into which the world was thought to be divided in ancient times, earth, fire, wind, and water and which are alluded to in these verses. I'm continuing with Rav Steinzold's commentary. All the streams go to the sea, flowing continuously, yet the sea is still not full. To the place that the streams go, there they go again, in the fixed water cycle. This brings to my mind all the things we do to fill and fulfill ourselves as if we're the sea, and we're just pouring in all these streams flowing continuously, but the sea <laughs> never gets full. All matters are wearying. People take action and take action again and exhaust themselves. A man is unable to speak everything that he would want to say. The eye will not be satisfied to see everything that it would want to see, and the ear will not be filled from hearing what it wants to hear. It just kind of feels useless how we just try to fill up our time and fulfill ourselves. And it just like never, it's never enough. It's never complete because that's the world outside, outside um, Torah, outside all that is authentic and lasting. All the other stuff just isn't, just isn't. That's what Gohelis is saying. All the, all the stuff that is just isn't. In summary, Pasuk uh, Tes, verse nine, that which is, is that which will be. And that which was done is that which will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Events transpire over and over again in a recurring cycle. Verse 10, there is a matter of which one would say, see, this is new. It has already been in the ages that were before us. Even when something appears to be novel, Rav Steinzold says, upon closer examination, one realizes that it is the same old, familiar, object. Perhaps there is a superficial change, but nothing more. Causes, ideas, uh, all the new, the new memes we see on Facebook, they're not new. They're based on old um, ways of communicating and behaving, uh, old uh, jokes that people make, and old um, interests, and there isn't really anything new and anything that 
can be fulfilling with all these superficial things. <laughs> Uh, verse 11, Kohelis returns to the subject with which he began. We're talking about Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon. Natural existence is fixed and cyclical, and one's exertion under the sun is of no avail and leaves no trace. As one generation goes and another generation comes, and there is no memory of the earlier ones who have already disappeared. One might then think that later generations will be remembered because their actions will be documented. Like nowadays we have... Um, so much documentation. In response, Kohelis declares, and also of the latter ones who will be, there will be no memory among those who will be last, who will come after them, as they will be unaware of the other generation's earlier existence. Let's say perhaps we do have records and memory and documentation of the past, but it's not alive to us in the way that we feel that we're alive now, where the where new and current and um, and relevant and the old generations are not in our minds and in our hearts current and relevant you know what <laughs> we you and i will be like will be that too in in a few um, short years and decades our descendants or the, the uh, humanity that will be how how long is a life human lifespan anyway say 100 years, say 120 years, and 120 years from, from today, from uh, 2020, in, um, in 2140, the year 2140, that's 120 years from now. There will be a whole new set of humans. None of us will, will be alive anymore. And in, in, uh, in a real sense, we'll have been forgotten, we'll be remembered from, probably, I would assume, from um, some kind of documentation that will survive, but we won't feel um, our reality of today, of literally today, will not feel current and relevant to the whole new set of humans that will exist uh, 120 years from now, maximum. We'll be, our existence will be nothing. Nothing, close to nothing. Basically nothing. All actions, Rav Steinzel says, will ultimately disappear and be forgotten as nothing lasts forever not in reality, and not in memory. I, Kohelis, where on verse 12, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. All opportunities were open to me, is what, is what um, King Solomon is saying. I directed my heart to seek and to search for wisdom about all that is performed beneath the heavens, and I reached the following conclusion about the deeds performed beneath the heavens. Here's his conclusion. It is an evil matter that God has given to the sons of man in which to be engaged, since all of mankind's endeavors provide no benefit, joy, or fruits. I have seen and examined all the actions that are performed under the sun, and behold, all is futility and hurting wind. One who engages in futile actions of this kind is comparable to one who attempts to herd the wind, like harness the, the breeze. Whereas one who herds sheep can produce milk, wool, or meat, one who attempts to herd wind will produce nothing from it. Indeed, the challenge of containing or directing the elusive wind is utterly ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy. All the, um, all the ways that we think that, uh, that the stuff we do has a meaningful impact when this is not the stuff of reality. It's, it's, it's ridiculous to... Um, to uh, think that that's meaningful. Any action that is performed under the sun is considered that which is warped and cannot be mended and deficiency that cannot be restored. Verse 16, I spoke with my heart, uh, King Solomon says, I contemplated saying, behold, I have increased and added wisdom beyond all who were before me over Jerusalem. My heart has seen much wisdom and knowledge. King Solomon Shlomo HaMelech was called the wisest of people. I directed my heart to know wisdom and to know debaucher, debauchery and folly. I knew this too. Analysis of these subjects and drawing novel conclusions is an empty notion, a futile undertaking. Shlomo HaMelech knew this. There is no substance or benefit in either wisdom or foolishness. You know, you um, you, you try to find fulfillment in, in uh, 
being intellectual and having all kinds of um, smart debates because we know so much information and we're so good at analyzing data. Uh, on the other hand, people go to foolishness, you know, get involved in all kinds of, all kinds of, um, all kinds of things in the world, all kinds of things to fill us. And, and King Solomon says there is no substance or benefit in either wisdom or foolishness. Verse 18, wisdom does not console a person, nor is it beneficial for with great wisdom is great anger, right? See, people who are so involved in, um, Intelligent debates are so angry. As a person grows wiser and his powers of discernment become more sensitive, he discovers more truths that anger him. And one who increases knowledge increases pain for himself. Wow. The pain of life in the world, the pain of his disappointment with the world, and the pain associated with greater knowledge. Okay, that's the conclusion of Parak Aleph, Chapter 1, according to the... Um, interpretation, the comments of Harav Steinsaltz, uh, his memory for for blessing, and um, these are the thoughts that we are, uh, we have the opportunity to think about as we read Kohelis on the Shabbos of Sukkot, which is coming up very shortly. So I um, pray and uh, and bless us all that we have the ability um, with Hashem's help to focus on all that's real in the world um, as we go about our daily activities and as we do all our stuff that we do because we're people and people live and do things. I, I hope and daven that I and that my family and that and that we can all focus on the meaning behind everything, the uh, what's what's real, what's authentic, and what's truly fulfilling. Thank you.